All right, so this lesson is on forms of energy. So, so far, we spent the last week or so talking about potential and kinetic energy. And you already know a decent amount about them. Um, but this lesson is to kind of show you that there's actually more types of potential and more types of kinetic than we've already talked about. So for our notes today, what I'd recommend you do is put your potential energy on 102 and your kinetic energy on 103. As always, these notes are your choice. You can draw pictures, summarize stuff, whatever you'd like. But your goal is when you come into class that you're able to talk about the different types of potential and different types of kinetic. And as always, if you don't know it 100%, that's fine. But you want to have a basic understanding so when we start the labs and discussions, you're able to participate in them. So we're going to start with potential um, because there's only a couple types of them that we haven't talked about. So the two main types of potential energy are gravitational and chemical. So gravitational we already know, um, and I guess I'll get into that right now. So gravitational, that's the one that we've talked about for the last week, when basically, basically you lift something up high, and the higher it gets, the more energy, potential energy it has because the force of gravity can pull it down. Um, the skater on a, a ramp or a pendulum, these are all examples of the gravitational potential energy that we have done. So the other type of energy, this is the new one. So the new type of energy is chemical energy. So this one is another form of potential energy uh, because the same idea when you look at it, it's not actually creating energy right then, but it has potential to create energy. So on the screen in front of you, you see some pictures and what I consider to be like the three main examples of chemical potential energy. So I'll talk about each of them. So if you look at the can of gasoline over here, obviously it sits there, it's not really doing a whole lot. But if you light a match to it, it has potential to obviously explode, catch on fire, stuff like that, which would create a tremendous amount of energy. And a battery, if you hold the battery in your hand, it's not like it's hot, it's not glowing, anything like that. But you flick a switch on a flashlight, then all of a sudden now the battery kind of kicks into gear and starts creating energy. So it has potential energy. And if you've ever actually like opened up a battery, which you shouldn't do because it's actually bad for you, but inside, um, there's actually chemicals inside there, which create this energy and flow of electrons and stuff like that. But probably the one that affects you the most is this kind of cartoon picture here, and obviously your stomach doesn't look like that, but food. Uh, food is, is the main example that affects you because um, what happens is if you eat your pizza or hamburger, hopefully something a little bit more healthy than that, it has all this energy inside it, and basically what your stomach and your intestines do is they break down the food and they turn it into energy. So it gives you energy to walk around, to do everything in life, to breathe, to think, to all that stuff. Uh, so it really, the whole point of food, the reason you eat it is it gives you energy. So the way I always think of chemical energy is think of fuel. Always think of fuel. So whether that's gasoline or food that fuels your body or batteries that fuel a flashlight or coal um, or any type of natural resource like that, any type of fuel is going to be your chemical energy. Okay, so those are the two main types of potential. So you only had to learn one more of them. So kinetic now we have a couple more. So you already know mechanical, which we're going to talk about, and I'm going to introduce three more types of kinetic energy for you. So the one we already know is mechanical or motion. You're going to hear it kind of called both. Um, and this is the movement of stuff, objects, substance, from one place to the other. So this is essentially what we've been doing for the last week. When you were running outside, that is kinetic energy. That's mechanical. Uh, when you drop a book and it starts moving, that's mechanical. Basically, anything that's moving, the skateboarder at the bottom of the ramp, the pendulum at the bottom, these are all kinetic energy motion. These are the things you already know. So this is what most people think of kinetic. So the next three are brand new types of kinetic energy. So I guess before I go on to the next three, I just want to recap. Kinetic energy is motion, so the next three things all involve motion in some way, just probably a little way different than you're used to. So the first one is electrical or electricity which obviously you know electricity is energy if you ever um, see anyone get zapped by anything, and which I guess I hope you haven't, but electricity creates energy and um, you knew it was energy, but the reason it's mechanical energy, or I'm sorry, the reason it's kinetic energy is because electricity is essentially it moves through things. If you plug something in, electricity moves through the wire, and what electricity actually is, is it's just electrons moving from one atom to the other, that's why it's called electricity, because it's electrons, but that's more of a, a chemistry thing. But I just want to show you that it is movement. So electricity, anything that involves electricity, uh, your TV being plugged in, a fan being plugged in, anything that has electricity is going to be electrical energy, which is a type of kinetic energy. 
The next type is electromagnetic, which I know sounds similar to electricity, but you'll also hear it called light energy. Sometimes you hear it called radiant energy, but let's just stick with light for now. It's energy that travels in transverse waves, and I know we don't know what transverse waves are, so I'll do my best to kind of simplify that for you. It's basically anything that flow or goes from one spot to the other in, I guess, mostly invisible waves, if you want to think of it like that. So the sun light travels to the earth in waves. The most common one you're going to see that we're going to talk about is light. So whenever you see light, light from a flashlight, light from your TV, light from the lights in the ceiling, um, these are light energy or electromagnetic energy. Some of the other ones, let's see if I even talk about the other ones. Yes, so light and then solar energy is a key one too, kind of like you saw there. So anything that's solar paneled, uh, your electricity from the, the solar panel, anything from the sun is going to be your electromagnetic or light energy. Not as common examples are like x-rays, radio waves, but I don't think we're going to talk about that too much, but I just want to at least throw it out there. There's other types of electromagnetic waves, or infrared waves and stuff like that, but main two I want you to think about is whenever you see light or solar energy, this is electromagnetic or light energy. Third one is thermal energy, also called heat energy. So basically when anything is hot, so whenever uh, you feel anything that's hot, that's energies. It's called thermal energy, and you also see it called heat energy because thermal means means heat. And the reason it's a kinetic energy is because what heat is in eighth grade, as you learned this last year in chemistry, is um, its vibration of molecules or atoms. So that's what makes things hot. That's why it's kinetic because it's things moving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So anything that's hot basically is going to be heat energy. So if you put your hand to something and it's hot, it's going to be thermal energy. And the main example here I have is friction. So if you rub your hands together, that makes your hands create friction, which creates heat. Or like we said, if you run and you fall on the, on the basketball court floor and it kind of burns your knee because of the friction, basically the friction causes heat energy. So friction causes heat energy, and you're going to see that pretty much everything you do in life has some sort of heat energy because a little bit's lost of friction. Um, so that's what the main example of thermal energy you're going to see. Okay, and I guess that covers it. Okay, so those are the main types of energy that I would like you to know coming into class. All right, so... Sorry about the pause there. So that wraps up the types of energy, and that's basically what you need to know coming to class is what are some type, these types of energies. I know that was kind of a lot all at once, so we're going to spend a lot of time in class doing labs and experiments and talking about things to make sure you, you get it. The main thing we're going to do in class is I want you to be able to do something kind of like this. Um, I'll show you an example. But basically the idea that energy just changes from one thing to the other. So what we're going to spend the next few days on is just talking about what type of energy changed from what type of energy. Because as you see right here on the screen, energy can't just be created or destroyed. It's only changed from one to the other. And that's called the law of conservation of energy. So I'm just going to do one example here on the screen, and then we'll do a whole bunch more in class. But what I'd like you to be able to do is look at a picture like this and say, all right, here is a normal thing of a fan being plugged into the outlet. What type of energies are happening here? What energy is being converted to something else? So I'll give you the example here, and let's see if you can figure it out on your own, though. So it's electric energy, because it's coming out of the socket here. Electricity is flowing through here. And the electricity energy is going through the fan, and then it's making the fan blade spin, which is mechanical or kinetic energy, or mechanical motion energy. So this is electric energy being turned to mechanical energy. There's probably a little bit of heat there, too. If you ever touch the back of the fan and the motor area, it's going to be kind of hot because there is some heat energy released, too. I guess I'll go over a couple more examples. The reality is if you want to stop this slide show right now, by all means, if you get this, um, call it a day. But I'm just going to go through a couple more examples in case you want to see some more examples to make sure that you really get this. So if I showed you the sun hitting the plant, what kind of energy is being transferred there? So here you have electromagnetic energy, which is light from the sun. And it hits the plant, which is chemical, which I know is confusing, but think of it like when you, when you eat a salad or any type of vegetable like that it has all the stored chemical energy that has energy to potentially um, give you energy to run and stuff like that. So any type of plant is going to be stored chemical energy. A toaster. If you have a toaster in front of you, it's going to be plugged into the wall, so it's going to be electrical energy transferred to thermal energy because all this heat inside the toaster is what makes your bread or whatever your bagel cook, electrical to thermal energy. Outlet to TV, kind of similar to the fan, you have your 
Oops, I guess I have one of the second ones on there. Sorry about that. This is electrical being plugged into the wall to electromagnetic because the light from the TV is how you see the TV. And there is, I'm sure, other types of energy happening here. These are just the main ones happening. And then wind energy. So the way wind energy happens is the wind moves, which is mechanical energy, and it makes the turbines spin and all that jazz to create electricity to electric energy. So that's the energy conversion that's happening here. My recommendation to you, let's see, actually, before I give you my recommendation, am I done here? No. Actually, all right, I'll give you my recommendation. Uh, is if this is overwhelming to you, go back, again, watch it a couple times, and if you can't do it, it's okay at this point, because this is what we're going to spend the next couple days on, so I don't want you to panic. But this is the main thing I want you to be able to do um, after we're all done with this unit, is be able to go from one to the other. So I'm still going to go through these examples in case you need them. So a battery to a light bulb. A battery, remember, it says has all chemical in it, so it has chemical energy inside the battery, and then you plug it into a light bulb and it turns it into electric energy, which goes through the, the battery, goes through all the wire, which is electricity, and then it hits the light and creates light energy. So this goes from chemical energy turning into electric energy, turning into light energy. So you, you keep hearing me say the word turning into, turning into, because that's what energy does. It just keeps turning into one thing to the other thing to the other thing. And then the reality is if you touch the light bulb, it's going to be pretty darn hot as well. So there's going to be some heat or thermal energy involved with that too. And this is kind of like the challenge one. Basically, if I say, how is rubbing your hands, how does the energy start at the sun? All right, so this, I'm going to take you through it. So basically the sun, you have your energy from the sun which then goes into the plant, which is essentially chemical energy. So you have solar energy to chemical energy. You end up eating this plant or salad inside your body, so you have all that chemical energy that you eat, which then gives you the mechanical energy to rub your hands, which then gives you the thermal energy to create friction and make heat. I know this was complicated, so I won't ever give you something this complicated, but I just want you to get the idea that everything you do, essentially, for the most part, starts from the energy from the sun, and it's just constantly way, way, well, many, many, many types of energy changing from one to the other. Okay, and that's it. I'll put this Brain Pop link on there uh, so you can take a look at that. I'll see if I can find some other videos to take a look at as well. So that is Types of Energy, and um, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed.